Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our living risen Savior Jesus. And by the power of his Holy Spirit, we come together to hear the word of the Lord for us this morning. In this Easter celebration, a celebration that continues for us of, of life and the presence of God's Spirit within us in that life as members of his kingdom. Friends, as we share the word of the Lord this morning with you, I'd like for you to join me in your Bibles in John chapter 14, the gospel reading we just heard. We'll, look, we'll work through verses 15 to 21 as we hear Jesus preparing his disciples for, we might talk about, a phase one reopening. Let me give you a little bit of context here. We join with Jesus in this gospel reading and Jesus is, is already uh, with his disciples in that upper room. In John chapter 13, you'll see there that Jesus has just washed his disciples' feet. And he's instructing them, telling them about what is to come. The Son of Man must be betrayed. He'll be turned over to the religious authorities. He'll be crucified. He'll die. He'll be buried. And he will rise again. And when he rises again, he'll then eventually take his rightful place at the Father's right hand and give you this advocate, this spirit who will live within you, claiming you to be my people. What Jesus is preparing his disciples for is a reopening of their lives into phase one, let's call it. We know all about that. In our commonwealth, at, at least in our commonwealth, in our commonwealth, there are different parts of our state that are being reopened as of Friday into what's being called phase one. Now, some of you may live in areas where you're not in any kind of reopening phase. You're not any, anywhere near a phase one reopening. And in fact, uh, parts of Virginia are, are still not uh, able to open under this kind of phase one plan. Uh, we are, to an extent here in the Shenandoah Valley, uh, operating now under a phase one kind of reopening. For, for Jesus and his disciples, remember, they had been self-isolated, you might say. Uh, we might even use the word quarantined from the perspective that for three years, these disciples had left home, they'd left their families, their places of work, and they had been with Jesus in his ministry, learning about him, the Messiah, and the kingdom, and Jesus was preparing them for what now we hear is a, a phase one reopening for their lives. What does that look like? Jesus speaks to them about this in verse 15. Join me in your Bibles there. John chapter 14, verse 15. This is what phase one, Jesus is saying, is going to look like as I open the kingdom. If you love me, Jesus is speaking to us as he's speaking to his disciples, keep my commands and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. And who is that advocate? But Jesus calls him by name, the Spirit of truth. What's going to happen in phase one is that God's people, these disciples, you and me, are called out into the world with the spirit of truth, this advocate who's uh, going to be with us forever, we're told, the very presence and the power of Jesus, who will empower us to love the Lord and keep his commands. Simple enough, right? Phase one seems Simple enough. Even as we enter into this with our own commonwealth, phase one is pretty simple. There's guidelines in place of what to do and what to not do. And it, it seems to be pretty simple. For us as believers, as Jesus is preparing us for this phase one, it's to love God and to love neighbor. And to do that is our calling because the advocate will help us. He enables us. He empowers us as he lives within us. This spirit of truth to live in the love of God as love for neighbor. Seems simple enough. And maybe those disciples in that upper room hearing Jesus lay out what phase one would be for his kingdom were thinking that as well. Well, this seems simple enough. And Jesus goes on. Join me in verse 17 as he continues teaching. 
and speaking the truth of the kingdom, where he says, the world cannot accept him. That is, this spirit of truth, the advocate. Because the world neither sees him, they don't know him, but Jesus says, you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. So while this for us as believers in Christ Jesus seems simple enough for a phase one opening, Jesus is saying it's not going to be for the world. For the world lives like this. Jesus says loving God and loving neighbor in the spirit of truth is different for you as disciples than it is for the world because their definition of love is different. The world's definition of agape is not self-sacrificing from a God kingdom perspective. It may have elements of self-sacrificing in it, but it's not of the kingdom. It's not of God's truth. It's not of this advocate who lives within us. And why is that? Even though the world may love in elements of self-sacrifice, it's doing so according to a human perspective, a human truth not a kingdom truth why is that well it's because jesus says sinful humanity the world doesn't accept him that is the spirit of truth and when jesus is talking about the world not accepting as compared to you and me in the in the calling of faith it means that the world in our sinful nature doesn't embrace doesn't follow that truth by kingdom standards. Jesus says, neither does the world see him. Not only are they, is it impossible for our sinful nature, the world, to embrace and follow the truth, but to grasp that truth then through a calling in life, through life patterns, examples that are, are within us from the Holy Spirit is impossible. Because the world, thirdly, Jesus says, doesn't know him. They don't experience him in everyday life. The joy, the gladness, what we call the the fruit of the Spirit. And as that Spirit is lived out in its gifts through our lives. This is the world. It does not accept him, see him, or know him. And from that perspective, Jesus would say, according to our sin and sinfulness... There is no reopening into a phase one kind of existence. In fact, by our sin and the sin that grips us, we live as if we're quarantined unto death with no hope of life. I know it may seem to many of you these days that that's what life is like, a a quarantine unto some kind of foreign existence, into some kind of desperation of days that, that just flip one into another. And is there any hope? Does, does phase one, according even to the, the commonwealth's standards, open us up for life again? What is going to be our new normal? The disciples that Jesus was addressing They probably, I'm guessing, were dealing with very similar kinds of questions, but on a spiritual plane and level. As a Lord, the Lord's disciple, will I ever be able to go home and be reunited with my family and and my my place of work? Lord, what is my new normal in your kingdom going to look like? What is phase one, according to your spirit, going to be, how is it going to be lived out in my life? Well, Jesus gives those disciples, as he gives even us a clue, turn with me in your Bibles now to verse 18, where this risen Lord speaks to us now, even as he was working through that plan of salvation with his disciples when he says these words. He says, look, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not going to abandon you. You are not going to be left on your own in this phase one opening of my kingdom as I send you out as my people, as I call you in my love to love God and love neighbor. You're not abandoned in this life unto yourself. No, Jesus says, look, I'll come to you. Before long, 
The world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. And on that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Friends, this is the truth of the Spirit at work within me and you, that the truth of the kingdom is known to us. It's embraced within us. We see it and know it as God's people, men and women of the kingdom, and we get to carry it to the world. This is where Jesus can say to us, in my love for you, love casts out fear. In my love, there is no life of fear, of, uh, of fear under quarantine unto death. There's only the hope that I give to you as my people, even as your life is opened into my kingdom. Because, as Jesus tells us, the spirit of life, that spirit of faith accepts him, and we see him, and we know him as men and women of his kingdom. It would be some years later that Peter would finally grasp this truth, even as Peter was in that group, in that upper room where Jesus is sharing these words of the gospel, it would be some years later, through some experiences of life, some up times and down times, times when Peter was self-isolated in prison and thought maybe there was no hope of a phase one reopening of my life. This is it. I'm done. It was some years later when he would share these words by the Spirit. First Peter chapter 3, verses, uh, uh, verse 18, which we heard, you heard Carol read just a minute ago, where Peter would share with us, for Christ died for sins once and for all. Yes, the hope that we have revolves around that forgiveness of sins in Jesus' death. The righteous for the unrighteous. Jesus became sick unto death with the virus of our sin that we might be made whole and clean and saved in him to bring you to God, to reopen your life in the life of the kingdom. For he was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, that same Spirit that now lives within you and me. The same Spirit that leads us forward, like people in a, in a new life, a phase one approach to living. And what, what, what might that phase one approach to, to living be for you and me? Well, let the word of the Lord define it. As Jesus says, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. Verse 21. Whoever, Jesus says, has my commands, you have them. I do too. We as his body of the church know them and have them. And we long to keep them. Because we long to show ourselves as the one who loves the Lord. There have been some great, great, wonderful, powerful examples of people in, in this time of pandemic who have risked it all for the sake of care of others. Some have done that according to world standards, for which we're grateful Others have done that according to kingdom standards. And it's oftentimes difficult to see and make the difference between the two because even as we've seen this, in this pandemic, unbelievers as well as believers have laid down their lives for the sake of those who need help. We're grateful to the Lord for that self-sacrificial kind of love displayed by many in our health profession and, and, and others, others around the globe, around the world. What we're talking about today is that kingdom kind of self-sacrificing love that is done out of the, the very kind of love that God has for us that knows the truth, the commands, and loves Jesus in the truth of that. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. And while we've seen some great examples of of self-sacrificing love in this pandemic time we can see from scriptures self-sacrificing love what it looks like from a perspective uh, of, of these people that we're given as an example in, in in the in the word of the Lord and this morning you heard one of those examples of Carol read for us from Acts about this man named Paul his name was Saul 
his life was changed in a phase one reopening where, there, where then he became known as Paul. And in that self-sacrificing kind of love for the kingdom, Paul went willingly by the Spirit's guiding to this place called Athens, a town, a city named Athens. And we hear, hear there that as he made his way around this city, as he interacted with the Athenians, he got to know them as people who were longing to know the truth of the word. And we see in Acts chapter 17, Paul putting into, com- into practice the commands of the Lord by exercising a love for the Lord as, first of all, he would practice great patience with the Athenians who they themselves were trying to make sense of life. That Paul, as he was among the Athenians in this phase one of the kingdom coming to the world, he loved them through the eyes of the Spirit, practicing patience with them. Friends, this is one of the great ways that we as God's people of the kingdom, of the commands of the Lord who love him, have an opportunity to differentiate ourselves from a moralistic kind of love of the world that might look self-sacrificing itself. And that is that we as God's people have an opportunity to practice a supernatural, you could say, kind of kingdom patience with one another. Not everybody, not all of us, are going to want to enter into this phase one opening right now for lots of different reasons some of us are are vulnerable in our health and and we we shouldn't uh, open ourselves up to risk some of us are are very apprehensive or maybe even fearful right now and that's okay to be there right now and it's okay then for us as God's people to practice a supernatural kind of patience with each other, understanding this is where we are. And I love you through the eyes of the Spirit, wanting to understand where you are as you're trying to make sense of life right now. You and me have an opportunity to be patient with one another. Paul, as he made his way through Athens, also sought understanding, to understand where these Athenians were, but then also not willing to compromise his faith amidst their perspective. To, sa- to, to practice this kind of, of godly love for the kingdom in a, in a phase one reopening, whether it's of the commonwealth of Virginia or into the kingdom of the Lord, is to seek to understand where people are without compromising the truth that we know as God's people. And Paul, we see, wanted to do this so that his faith could help them eventually understand God's love for them. I want to understand where you are and be patient with you so that in case you're dealing with some things that right now are okay to deal with, we ought not to stay there. We ought not to allow fear to dictate our our days and our lives for, for however long. I want to understand where you are, but then, but then as a person of faith, share with you that, that God's love for us drives out this fear. And we live in confidence. We live in hope. We live as people not bound to earth, but, but bound for eternity. And Paul, as he made his way through Athens, also sought to know these people, to get to know these people. And he didn't do this in self-isolation, but he went out to where these people were. He rubbed shoulders with them. Now, for the time being, we're not able to rub shoulders with one another. We're having to practice social distancing. And and we're going to be wearing masks for a while. And so our getting to know others is going to be defined a little bit differently than maybe what Paul was doing in, in Athens. But still, we long to get to know people So that, like Paul, that good news of the gospel that he knew, that you and I know, that they might know then a hope which is bound in the name of Jesus. That no matter what kind of virus or pandemic or economic crash or self-isolation or distancing might even affect us in the future, we live as people who have hope 
a hope that not only are we going to make it through this time and into phase one as Jesus has opened his kingdom to us, but guess what? There's even a phase two that's on its way. And I'm not talking about for us in the commonwealth or in the country or society in which you live in or the community where you find your home. I'm talking about the kingdom. For Jesus would end this section with his disciples in verse 21 saying, The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them, and I will show myself to them. Friends, that's our phase two, our experience of eternity, where we stand face to face with our Redeemer, the Righteous One, who has healed you and claimed you to be his son or daughter, his brother or sister. Where we stand face to face, loved by our Heavenly Father, in a phase two that is our eternity, our heavenly home. Until that day, until that time, when phase two is our eternal reality, as we live and move and have our being now, in this day, in at least a phase one kind of way, may the love of Jesus that has embraced you in his kingdom and sends you out into the world with that very kind of self-sacrificial love that's of the kingdom, may his spirit the Advocate, be with you and lead you and guide you in his ways of truth. In Jesus' name and to his praise and glory. Amen. And so may the peace of God that passes our understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life eternally. Phase two, even as we live in phase one.